Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make this chef's hat and coat for your stuffed animal. Thanksgiving's coming up and my favorite part is getting in the kitchen and baking, so I thought this was the perfect thing to make so my stuffed animal could help. Now let's get started! So today I'm making this for my Build-A-Bear Cutie Pie and you might recognize her from my How to Make an Apron video. So she has graduated from home cook to full on chef. The first thing I'm making is the hat, so I'm measuring around her entire head. Her head is 15 inches around, so I'm just going to remember that for later. Next, I'm taping two pieces of white paper together so they're at least 15 inches long, and I later realized I should have just cut one piece in half and taped the ends together. But now I'm cutting the piece down to 15 and a half inches long, then cutting it in half lengthwise so it's about 4 inches wide. If I were to do this again though, I'd probably cut it thinner to maybe about 3 inches or 2 inches. Then I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise and set it aside. Next, I'm going to grab a big piece of white tissue paper, or you could use parchment paper. I folded my piece in half so it was about 8 inches wide by 26 inches long. Next, starting on the shorter side, I'm going to start folding this kind of like how you'd fold a fan. I'm folding the edge about an inch over, flipping it around, and then doing the same thing. And I'm going to continue doing this till I've gotten all the way to the other end. After that, I can grab my long piece of paper back and open it up. Then I'm going to place my tissue paper inside and fold it back up. Then I'm going to staple it all together, starting on both ends to lock it in place. Then staple the middle together as well. After that, to cover up the staples, I'm grabbing another piece of paper the same width and length and gluing that on top. Now this side is the good side of the hat, which you want showing out. Here I made a mistake, so don't mind the crinkled top. But next I'm going to match the two ends of the hat up, but with the staple side facing out. Then I'm going to gather the top of the tissue paper all together and then wrap it with tape. At this point we can now kind of turn it inside out, so I'm flipping that good side of the hat out and matching up the sides again. That way that little bundle we made is tucked inside. Now for some reason this was the hardest part for me, but now I just need to match up the two sides and kind of stick them together. I tried to tape it together from the inside so it was kind of hard to show, but really you can secure this any way you want. And after taping that base part together, the last thing to do is puff out the tissue paper part. I like to mainly fluff it out at the top to get that signature chef hat look. And after that, the hat is done, so I'm going to try this on. As you can see, I made it a little too big, maybe more like human proportions, but I still think it looks really good. Next, I'm going to make the chef coat. I first need to cut out my pieces from white fabric, and I'll of course have these linked down below. And with these, I need two of each piece. For the main shirt looking pieces, you want them to be mirror images of each other, so the best way to do that is just fold the fabric in half, pin the pattern on, and cut it out. For the sleeve and collar pieces, it doesn't matter if they're mirror images, you just need two of them. After all my pieces are cut out, I'm going to focus on the front of the coat, and those are the shirt looking pieces that are wider. With the bad side facing up, I'm just going to fold over this bottom edge to hem it. After pinning these down, I'm going to use a straight stitch to sew across the bottoms of both. I'm also going to do the same exact thing to the back pieces, so I'm going to hem those as well. The next step is to hem the necklines of only these front pieces. Since folding over a curve can be pretty difficult, I like to make a few small cuts along just the curved parts, and that just helps me fold them over easier. For one of the pieces, I'm also going to fold in that inner side. After pinning down the other piece's neckline, I'm going to sew these in place. Now here's where I have to admit that I'm not actually making a real chef's coat. I don't like dealing with making buttonholes, so I'm just going to have the appearance of a buttoned up coat in the front, but have velcro in the back to actually put it on. You of course can add buttonholes to these front pieces to actually make it buttoned up in the front, but I'm just going to be overlapping the pieces about 3 inches and sewing one on top of the other, and I'm making sure the piece with the side hemmed is on top. I'm also going to flip this over to the back and hem the other side I haven't yet, since you'll kind of see it through the front, so I wanted a clean edge still. But now I'm going to just sew along right where I've pinned. After that, it's looking great, there's still this little opening in the front, but that'll be closed up once I add the buttons. Now I can set that aside and move back to the back pieces, and I haven't hemmed the inner sides of those, so that's what I'm going to do next. And usually I'd add the velcro at this stage, but I'm going to wait on that till I add the collar. After that, I can finally sew the back pieces to the front ones, so I'm just matching them up, making sure the back pieces overlap a little bit, and I'm going to sew a straight line across the tops of both shoulders to connect them. After that, I can move on to the sleeves, and the first thing to do, of course, is to hem it, so I'm going to fold over the bottom edges, pin those down, then sew them in place. Next, I can sew the sleeves onto the coat, so I'm making sure to open up the coat good side facing up, 
and I'm laying the sleeves on top, good side facing down, then I can pin the curves together. After doing that to the other sleeve and sewing the pieces together, it should look like this. And now I need to start making the collar. The collar pieces are these two short rectangles that I'm going to fold in half lengthwise. Make sure you're folding them good side to good side, but with this white fabric you can't really tell. And I didn't really feel a need to pin this, but the way I'm going to sew this is kind of starting from the middle, then curving around to that folded edge, and then stopping and doing the same thing for the other end. Just make sure you leave an opening big enough in the middle to eventually turn this inside out. After that, you can kind of see the shape I went for a little bit better, but it will be even more clear once I turn this inside out. So I'm using the end of a paintbrush to help me get out those curved edges. Now I can sew this onto the main coat, which I already have opened and with the good side facing up. And I'm going to lay them good side to good side right in the middle of the front of the coat piece. Then I can just keep matching them up with the neckline and pinning them in place. Mine had a tiny bit of extra sticking out in the back, but that's okay. Once I've done the other collar, I'm going to sew these on with a straight stitch. After that, you should be able to flip the collar up like this, just like with a real chef coat. Next, I still need to sew up the bottoms of the sleeves and sides of the coat, so I'm folding the whole coat in half, good side to good side. Then I can pin together the sleeves and the sides, and then sew it all together in that kind of upside down L shape. After that, I still had some extra fabric from the sleeves sticking out, so I'm cutting that off. And now I'm finally going to add the Velcro. I'm going with two really skinny pieces of Velcro, one at the very top and one at the very bottom. So I'm pinning my top one kind of in the middle of the collar, and the Velcro I used for the bottom one was just a sticky one, so I just peeled that off and stuck it on. For the other sides of the Velcro, I'm making sure to put that on the inside of the coat so they match up, and I'm really making sure that they're lined up with each other. To make these easier to sew on, I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch straight down all these pieces, since they're all pretty skinny. After that, the Velcro will look like this, and the coat is technically all put together, but to really sell that this is a chef's coat, I'm going to still add some buttons. I'm going to do three on each side to form kind of a rectangle shape, and now I'm just sewing on each one by hand. My buttons only had two holes, so I'm just going in and out of both of them, and then locking my stitch in the back. For this first button, I meant to go through both layers of fabric, but I just forgot. After sewing on all the buttons, my chef's coat is finally done! Now I can try this on, and for her pants, I just had her wear these black overalls I made in a previous video, and then basically tucked in the shirt part, so she's just wearing black pants. I really love the way this turned out. I was kind of overwhelmed coming up with a pattern and plan for this. I was looking at all kinds of pictures, but it turned out exactly how I envisioned it. Of course, I need to top it all off with the chef's hat. I also tucked in this little spatula I made from my apron video. Now she's officially ready to cook something up for Thanksgiving or any occasion. Since she will be cooking though, I rolled up her sleeves a few times so it doesn't get too messy. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, comment any video requests you have, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll see you next time!